On the first days of this historic First World Baha'i Congress, we were privileged to hear recounted the fruits of victory gathered during the World Crusade. And from his treasury of immortal memories, hand of the cause, Tara Zola Samandari, shared with us the precious moments he spent in the presence of the Blessed Beauty. Also, we have been reminded of the tablets of the divine plan, the blueprint designed by that incomparable architect, Abdul Baha. This afternoon, we shall learn of the spiritual and administrative significance and importance of the world center of our faith, the midmost spot of the planet so graphically described by our beloved Shoghi Effendi as the heart and nerve center of the entire world. This, of course, is the 100th anniversary of the Declaration of Baha'u'llah. But 95 years ago, on August 31, 1868, Baha'u'llah stepped ashore and entered the sea gate in the wall of the fortress city of Akka. At that very moment, the Holy Land became the spiritual center of the world. Shortly thereafter, the outpourings of that supreme pen set in motion the forces which have made it the administrative center of an embryonic world order. That we may fully appreciate and understand the unique status of this ancient city once called Ptolemaeus, and its twin across the bay. Let us go back to that year of 1868. Akka was considered the most desolate of places. Pestilence, plague, and poverty characterized this walled city of the Christian Crusaders. Under Turkish rule, although it was used primarily as a penal colony, it was deemed to be an important Muslim center. Conversely, Haifa was a small, small fishing village, drowsing under the burning Middle Eastern sun. The only enterprise was centered around the German colony, whose members had come to the holy mountain of God to await the second coming of Christ. Yes, these were the conditions existing in these two out-of-the-way Palestine ports at the coming of the Lord of the Age. In that wonderful chronology of the first Baha'i century, God passes by, the beloved guardian relates in minute detail the incarceration of Baha'u'llah in Akka. But only when we are on pilgrimage, retracing his steps, do we begin to dimly understand the tribulations which afflicted him in that place? We visit the small bare room in the barracks, which was his prison, its windows affording only a small glimpse of the open sea. And then we go a few hundred meters along the sea road, along to the house of Abud, now joined to the house of Odi Kamar, the house where his most holy book of laws was revealed. We look out upon the balcony which he used to pace. We go back to the tiny room where the master and a dozen others shared sleeping quarters. And we wonder as we look about how they managed to sleep. And as we go through our pilgrimage, we have many opportunities to see, perhaps not to feel, but at least to see. And you know the old city of Akka still retains much of the atmosphere of those days. And we can readily understand what it is that we read about those times. Today, however, Akka has slipped into comparative obscurity, that is, as a city.
and Haifa. The bustling Mediterranean seaport has become world-renowned. To Baha'is, of course, the reason is apparent. But how heartwarming it is when you have the bounty of guiding at the shrine of the Bab to hear an Israeli say and remark with what pride he remarks about the shining golden dome shrine of the Bab and the beautiful gardens surrounding it. And he says to the friend that he has brought to this spot, this is the most beautiful spot in all Israel. And he speaks of it proudly. So these are the twin holy cities of our faith, Akka and Haifa. They contain our two holiest shrines. They are the world center of the Baha'i faith, both spiritually and administratively. So much for the physical places, Akka and Haifa. <laughs>